<clears throat> Hi guys. Um, so I have to start making videos and I know they're going to be bad and I'm not looking forward to it, but if I don't make something then nothing's ever going to get better. So here we go. I have a question for you. Do you have one of these? For anybody who doesn't know, this is a Fuji GX680. Um, this is a amazing camera with a pretty critical problem, which is that the batteries for it, these things aren't made anymore. Um, we're gonna get rid of this over here. Now, this one still works, but a lot of them don't. You can get a battery pack that uh, runs off of double A's. That can be like 150 bucks. Um, and I personally didn't want to do that because I wasn't going to drop another $150 on top of the price of the camera. And I tend to go the DIY route, which is another option. So I made this thing. Now this is a battery plate that attaches it's more of an adapter that attaches onto the GX680 the other way like this and then you can put uh, Sony NPF batteries on it which is pretty slick because these things uh, are all over the place and they're um, uh, they last longer than the original batteries at least I mean they should anyway the uh, milliamp hours are significantly longer I think this one's like 2900 and the other one's and the and the original battery is only 700 so that's pretty great and that's just for the small ones um, you've got uh, some medium-sized ones too which are a bit bigger and have a bit more capacity and then you've got some uh, really big ones which will just take you uh, forever <laughs> um, and you've got a bunch of other options as well you've got these DC adapters which will allow you to plug the camera right into a wall, which is basically a dummy battery running to a running to an outlet, which is pretty neat if you wanted to do that. And then you've also got this beast, which is a which is a giant battery that will allow you to power the camera, uh, something from a DC output and something from a USB output, all at the same time. I think you can do it all at the same time. So you can charge your phone while you're powering the camera and like charge a flash unit or something. I don't know, charge something with a DC output. Besides that, it also has an indicator light on it, which will let you know how much battery you have left. So that's pretty great. And then also you've got this double A battery pack, which will allow you to put double A's in it, which is cool too. The only downside to this and also anything, any of these batteries with the giant battery profile is that it sticks out a lot. and ruins the profile of the camera so you know if it's on a tripod in a studio probably won't care if you're carrying it around it might be a little more annoying but you know the point is that you have some options here okay so now let's talk about this adapter so this looks really big and nasty and complicated um, but it's not or you know complicated to make but it's not here's why um, first of all most of it is just something you buy uh, I think I just said this but this is a battery plate for like a fuel world monitor and you can get these solo off of eBay or all you need to make this is one of these um, some of this, which is JB Weld 
basically epoxy uh, plastic bonder. I don't know. It's uh, JB Weld, but it's black. The nice thing about JB Weld is it's an epoxy, but I don't know. You probably do this with all epoxy, build, but I know with this stuff, you can build up surfaces with it. So like, I mean, besides just being a glue. So like the corners on this are rounded. Well, I squared them off using this stuff. So you need one of these, you need JB Weld, you need a knife, which I don't know where mine went, but you need a uh, box cutter. Um, and I would advise you get one with a, you make sure you have a new blade on it because you're gonna be using it heavily and a dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp knife. Uh, and you're gonna need tape. You can use duct tape. I advise you use this stuff. Uh, I don't know what this is. It's not packing tape, but you know, like this tan tape. Uh, I'm sure everybody's seen this somewhere. But you know, get like this tan tape. It's nice. It works. It's just rips and works a little bit better than duct tape. So that's all you need. These four things. Uh, the fourth being the knife that I don't have. So I would not make it the, exactly the same way that I made it. Uh, if I were you, this is what I do. Excuse me. So I'd start off by taking these corners and squaring them off. I forgot how I can show this best. You see this corner on this one I didn't modify is round. This one's square. And the reason you need to do that is because you have to uh, you need there to be a ceiling on that area for the um, the little spot where the pins on the camera go and uh, make contact with the electrical contacts. Because if you look at the camera body, there are these two little silver pins and those are your electrical contacts on the camera. And they uh, just need a metal plate sit on top of them to make electrical contact. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your tape and then you're going to line it up with on the edge here and you're going to wrap it around without letting it fold in so that you leave this little pocket if I get this side and then you're going to let it touch the side here and you'll see you have these two pockets. You're also going to want to tape up these holes in the bottom so that the epoxy doesn't go, go, doesn't go through. You're going to mix up some epoxy and then you're going to dump it in there and you're going to let it sit. And when you're done, you'll have these nice little walls. These nice, uh, you know, this extra mass on this thing that you can work with. And it's going to look kind of ugly. Um, the sides look pretty good. They blend pretty well, but the top is going to be shiny. It's not going to ma match at all. So if you sand it down and then draw over it with Sharpie, it looks a little bit better. But, you know, this is just a rough guide. You can do whatever you want with this to make it look good. But you can make it, like, I think there's a lot of potential in this thing to look really nice if you really want to uh, make it look like that. <clears throat> um, see anything else. Right, so you're going to take your tape, do this, put your epoxy in. And then you're going to have these walls, these corners. There's epoxy in the other side. So you're going to take it, you're going to flip it over so it's upside down. And now what you want to do is build up some epoxy along this edge. So the way you do that is you tape up these holes uh, where the battery... Oh, that's interesting. There's actually nothing there on that one. Well, you tape up these holes where the battery is like a or the battery is secured. I would do it on this side, I'd probably do it on this side. Tape up those holes. Uh, I'd probably tape up these holes on this side. Hey, uh, actually don't tape it up on that side because then you're not going to be able to get any JV weld in there. You're going to have to tape it up on the side I am telling you not to tape it up on because then it'll create a nice pool to the screw holes because those aren't going to, you're not going to use those for anything so you're going to want to epoxy them in so that it doesn't look like, you know, so that it looks nicer. 
Or maybe not, I don't know. I did. And then you're gonna take some tape and actually, I don't know if duct tape might be better for this. Yeah, duct tape is definitely better for this. Okay, I lied, you're gonna need duct tape. <laughs> uh, oh, actually I have a piece here. So you're gonna take some duct tape and you're going to make a wall right up about in line with these holes, with the screw holes. And actually you're gonna make it, you're gonna to wanna to make it a little bit longer than I have here so that it wraps around completely. Hold on, or just bear with me for a second here. And this doesn't have to be like perfect or anything since nobody's gonna see it. You just wanna keep the epoxy from flowing over the rest of, flowing, in, flowing into the rest of the uh, bottom here. So you see there's kind of this wall here. Then you just fill this thing up with epoxy. Um, and now you should have something that looks roughly like this. If you look at this area, this is epoxy, um, this is epoxy right here. Um, this little band is just because I shaved some of it down, so that's why it doesn't, it doesn't look the same. Uh, but yeah, that's all you have to do for that. Then once you've, right, that's all the filling out. So once you've, once you've uh, increased the mass of your plate, then you're gonna wanna start cutting. So you, first, you're gonna wanna shave down, let me get a pencil for this. You're gonna wanna shave down the edges along the back here. You're gonna wanna shave down this outside area so that it fits under Neath the slot that the camera has to secure this plate down. Do that on both sides. And then you're going to want to cut a slot, completely cut out this little shelf thing sticking out here. Like you see this running along the edge. You're going to want to completely cut out a section of this so that it fits onto the camera. And when you have this stuff and you're doing it, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm not going to give you exact measurements because I didn't really, I didn't even take exact measurements, I just did it by eye but you'll, it'll be pretty simple, you'll see. Then you're gonna wanna, coming up a little bit further here, you're gonna wanna cut out a slot up here, close to the, close to the contacts for the lock on the camera to fit into. Um, and that's gonna be the little shelf area, and then also you're gonna cut up into the wall. And then you get into some of the more complicated stuff. So, uh, <laughs> so this is why um, I created these edges up here. This is why you create these edges up here. You're going to want to cut out a slot in the bottom front of this thing for the electrical pins to go through, so they can come through and meet the contact, meet the electrical contacts. And if you have a Dremel probably be easier to just dremel this out. If you have a knife, this is probably going to be the hardest thing to cut with a knife, but you can do it. Again, just be careful. Besides that, all you're going to have to do for cutting is trace out the edge uh, of the camera here because this plate will sit a little bit, will go a little bit, oh, will goes, it goes a little bit uh, too long. It's a little bit too long for the camera. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. If I can find it. I moved it again. Camera! <laughs> Here. So you see this? See the shape? You gotta cut that shape out in the plate or else it'll stick out a little bit. And it's not actually that big a deal. It's just you won't, your movement here won't be able to go back all the way in like a couple very specific circumstances. Um, it, it won't even keep it from going back all the way in general. It's just it might not. You might not be able to have it like right here, which normally won't even be a problem. It's just if you want to be complete with this, then you have to cut that out, and it looks a little bit nicer too. Um, but anyway, that's that's all semantics. So, oh, actually, there's one thing about cutting that out. Let's see if I have tape. 
Okay, so when you cut this, when you want to, to mark this slot, if you want to make it look really nice, what I did was I took tape, put it all along here, and this is to, this is because you're going to trace, you're going to trace the, uh, you're going to trace this line onto the back of this plate, and you don't want to draw on your camera. And then um, I took I took the bellows off, so I removed the bellows. I took the front standard and lens off, which you just do that by unscrewing uh, by unscrewing the the front bar here, and then you can just um, and then you can just unscrew the front standard until it comes off. And then you can reach up behind this, because remember there's going to be material here, you can reach up behind this and with a silver sharpie, if you have a silver sharpie, uh, or a pencil might even just work because it's kind of grayish, not black. Excuse me, you trace this edge. And then you can put everything back on and you're going to have a nice line on your... Uh, it's kind of tight because of the tape. There, you're going to have a nice line on the back of your thing here that you can just cut out and I used a hacksaw to cut it so that's another thing you're actually going to need probably as a hacksaw uh, if you want to make it look really nice so <laughs> you did so you need some uh, some of that tan tape a box cutter and epoxy if you want to do this and you also need duct tape and uh, duct tape and a silver oh duct tape and a hacksaw <laughs> if you want to make it look if you want to make it look really nice uh, anyway but that's all you're gonna have to do for cutting and like shaping and getting the thing to fit okay once you've done all that then you're going to have to deal with electrical contacts now I've got some really good news for you you don't have to solder this so if you're looking at this and you're like I don't know anything about electricity well have no worries because uh, you don't have to really know anything about electricity should you solder it? Yeah, probably. It's a best. It's a good thing to do, but you know, the world's not going to end if you don't. But you should if you can. Um, all you have to do is take these wires here. So you're gonna have to strip these wires, and you can do that carefully with a knife with your box cutter. You're gonna strip the 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 insulating material off of them. Um, and then red is gonna go to your is gonna go left, black is going to go right. Um, now let's see, so about these electrical contacts, I don't really know. I tend to be a little more cautious than I probably have to be about stuff like this, but you could probably use just any like little semi springy piece of metal for these electrical contacts it reaches from here it reaches from the like uh, the edge of this this bar the edge of this bar up to here up into this corner and it's got to be like an eighth of an inch thick it's got to be a little bit just springy so that um, your pin once your pin comes in it'll push it up and it'll and the springiness will keep it in contact with the pin um, I used one eighth audio jack ports. I think that's what these things are off of Amazon. I had these lying around, so I, I just pulled these things out, and one of these was folded over. I lengthened it out, and I cut some pieces off, and I used that. But again, you could probably—I don't know. This is something you might have to look up, or it might not be an issue. I don't really know. Um, but you take these, you, you make your, uh, you get your electrical contacts. And you epoxy them with the same epoxy used for all this other stuff. You epoxy them down onto this onto this bar right here, so that they're not rubbing against the wall, and they can move up and down. Uh, and then you just twist the wire so that it'll. F oh, I just realized. Okay, so the electrical contacts I had, I said that you didn't need to solder because there's a little hole in them. Um and I just flip the, fit the wire through. So you might, so, so you don't have to solder if you drill a small hole in your electrical contact and then just loop the wire through. But otherwise, yeah, you're gonna have to solder this. 
yeah so that's all that that's all you need to know on how to make one of these battery plates uh, this is this is a nice way to do it compared to all the other ways I've seen people do it on the internet just uh, selling their cameras on eBay and stuff because this one looks pretty good uh, this doesn't look terribly professional but it looks more professional than the ones I've seen and you could make it look pretty nice I think if you really took your time and effort and put some work into it all right and you can just pretend that I had a smooth transition there uh, and we're at the end of the video now so thanks for watching hope that I helped you out with your camera problems um, I've got links to all my social media stuff and by that I mean Instagram because that's the only thing I really maintain in the description I've got an Instagram account where I post all my behind the scenes and then I've got one where I post all my pictures if you want to see any of that I also have another YouTube channel where I put up like military themed stuff for Civil Air Patrol if you know what that is or if you're curious you can go check that out again everything in the description I hope that you guys had fun with this uh, I know I did even though I hate editing when there was a lot of that so I kind of had fun with this. I don't know. Whatever. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.